everyone, and welcome back to Star Ladder Season 11 Europe. We are now into our third matchup of the day, and this matchup will feature Team Empire taking on, well, they are currently tagged as Vega Squadron, but they also are known as Euro PB. Don't know a lot about this group. I'm excited to learn more about them and come with us on this journey into some more Dota, but bringing you the action myself, Kyle Guy. Joining me remotely is going to be Blaze. Blaze, my friend, are you there? How you doing? I'm doing really well, man. That first game was pretty intense. A lot of cool plays, a lot of awesome Arcana crits coming out. So maybe we'll see some more of that this time around. But no matter the case, uh, Empire versus Euro PB. It's kind of a, a little bit of a CIS showdown here. Both of them obviously hailing from the same general area. It looks like uh, Ukraine and Russia is the primary makeup of this Vegas squadron group here. Sioma's team. Uh, Captain by RZ, which I'm not familiar with, but it should be interesting to see his drafting style and uh, how he clashes. Obviously, we know CIS Dota, best Dota when it comes down to just all-out brawls, constant fighting, and these lineups mm -hmm. are already facilitating that quite well. Yeah, we'll see how it goes from here. We won't waste uh, any more time. Uh, the draft at hand shows that Team Empire are going to pick up the Elder Titan Vengeful Spirit support combo that we've been seeing notoriously out of teams like Cloud9, and we were expecting in the previous game. You called it out at that point, and now they're going to have huge damage amplification right there, reasonable lockdown, and pretty much the formula for a, a, a great support foundation on the side of Empire. Uh, Team Vega Squadron, uh, they get their... Skywrath Mage, and they follow it up with a Legion Commander here. Not going to be a, a Faceless Void grab. They go with a Legion Commander, who obviously does have her own bit of lockdown, and I can't help, though. It, it's a Legion Commander now going to be going against a Vengeful Spirit. Mm -hmm. That that just seems to be a bit hairy to me, Blaze. Oh, definitely. I think Venge is a pretty hard counter to Legion. Just the capability to swap out her target forces her to walk towards it. It's almost like lassoing yourself when you go for a duel and the Venge is able to get a good swap off. Because uh, you can obviously swap the Legion, but if you swap the target of choice, they're going to meet in the middle and uh, you're just going to be able to pull the, not only pull them out of the Mystic Flare, but pull them into a really bad situation, a fight they don't want to take. So we'll see. I think a lot of the action is going to actually occur before either hero hits six, so we'll have to see... If that's going to hold true for now, the Legion Commander could be laned in either the offlane sense or the mid lane sense. I've seen her work as a carry, but generally speaking, when you don't have a good, reliable, a core physical damage dealer beyond the Legion, then remaining. you're putting too much onto one hero that isn't great for an AoE carry sense. Five like, she can remaining. single target down anybody she wants, but she won't be able to put the entire game on her shoulders against five heroes. You need something on top of that, Team maybe a Empire's Razor or something to get picked to pick. up. Yeah, I'm curious to say where to look at ticket from here. You said Razor. Razor obviously has been uh, blown past so far in the draft. Same with that uh, Faceless Void grab here. But Empire, after already grabbing what looks like their potential supports, this is going to kind of make it together right now. They could go for a good old reliable offlaner, getting something like a Centaur who's still in the pool and available. Um, if this was uh, Team Cloud9 and they were following through, they would probably go for like a, a Jakiro for their Bone 7 offlane kind of position or a Bat Rider. They are on Dire's side, Five so there's a lot to choose from right there if they kind of just want to move through this without giving up too much information, just kind of throwing together some respectable Reserve team fight. Time. And I think they feel pretty comfortable already having the Vengeful on their side against this Legion Commander where... You know, for a team like Vega Squadron, which I don't know a whole lot of and how they're going to lane things out, and could be kind of the surprise factor for both teams. I don't know how much experience Empire even personally has going against them. It could be a rambunctious group and could take them outside their comfort zone. So we'll see where they go from here. They they ban out that Wisp and that tor Storm Spirit. And on the side of Vega, they get rid of the uh, Medusa grab as well as the Puck. And, well, there is going to be the Radiant Bat Rider grab. So pick. they do go with their offliner. Bat Rider, it's just no surprise already being on the dire side and having that favorable lockdown. It just works so beautifully. So I don't, I'm not... I'm not surprised by this whatsoever blaze not at all a lot of potential in this year to pick somebody off pull them out of position and make their life difficult on top of that you can follow it up with things like the earth splitter um assuming your skyrath doesn't get the silence off first the bat rider could blink in immediately get silenced and ten immediately seconds, regret his decision but seconds, as it remaining. stands he'll probably be able to farm up the blink four staff quickly Five enough as long as he's remaining. very careful about the laning phase skyrath is pretty good at zoning and uh with a hero, Reserve the number time. of heroes that are still in the pool that would be able to couple with the Sky Wrath and deal some good damage. Bat Rider will have to play it safe or maybe do what we saw last game and just go to jungle straight up level one. So we'll see how the lanes pan out. But as it stands, Bat Rider is going to be a great contribution and it opens the, the gates for Empire to draft how they want to. Fourth and fifth pick is where you'll find Silence Core. Like they never usually pick this up in the first three. And in that sense, it often gets banned out. Like if they want to go for the Medusa, that's not 
available. They still go, could go for the gyrocopter if they wanted to go that route. Obviously, the natural order and the wave of terror work really well mm-hmm. with the flak cannon, and uh, it's going to be difficult for the Vega squadron to counter that out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the, the silent gyrocopter come on out. He's one of the few, him and Havos, that really love their gyrocopter and their ballsy berserker style kind of a play, and I gotta say it works nice. I mean, even if Batrider has to forfeit his lane, go back to the jungle, he has Vengeful and Elder Titan as a support staff. They're both great at just providing <laughs> some extra bit of vision with Wave and, of course, the Spirit, Team and they're great Empire's at stacking and being able to, to build pick. up a lot of farm potential for their Batrider or for whoever their core could be. And, you know, it, it just seems so strong and prominent. For uh, Vega Squadron now, they get a hold of their secondary support. It's going to be the Lich here. So trying to rattle my brain as far as what Lich really offers as far as countering back anything M- Empire have is a bit bewildering. He does offer, of course, the anti-push with the, the armor being able to be Ten there. Ten seconds and Sustained chain frost isn't really canceling any channeled abilities. Uh, he does, of course, Five have huge lane remaining. dominance to add with sacrifice in the early game. They could end up going for something like a morphling to put him together with in that mid He's lane. Uh, I'm curious to see where they're going to take it from here. Yeah, I mean, Lich is good for the laning phase, and it's going to contribute to getting some early tempo off of them, but I don't like him as a hero so much in this sense that they mm. they can't really cluster anybody. They can't control them to make sure the Chain Frost will do their bidding, and it seems like it's almost just a, a pick to get the armor Templar on the field. Like, assassin. they can get a lot of nice a positive armor out of the Radiant ice armor to pick. negate some of the presence of the natural order of the Wave of Terror, but on top of that, you get this Meld Strike, and you're still going to be very Empire far in the red as far as that goes. I would have preferred maybe, like, an Omni Knight so the pickup that they actually have run all lot looking at their history here we've seen a lot of two, actually two of their players have played quite a bit of omni knight and the obviously garden angel gives you immunity to physical damage remaining. which would have given you a lot more potential to survive through the fights but they Five go for this lich remaining. phoenix combo and if the the mechanism comes out from either of these guys early enough i, I guess it will be suitable bad. it's just not ideal yeah, so the second time today we're going to see Phoenix get grabbed up after a period of time when most teams just kind of blew it off to the side. Team it's it's X game in the first game who grabbed up the Phoenix for Wadafaka. Unfortunately, didn't really, it didn't bring a big enough performance where I'm like, oh, Phoenix seems to be where it's at now. It was just kind of an offlaner who really helped out a little bit here and there, but nothing too crazy. It seemed like they had an answer for his ultimate more often than not, and it was a bit finicky, but here in the hands of Vega Squadron, we might see a different here as, uh, you know, Phoenix simply ran the off lane. This kind of leads me to believe that potentially this Legion commander Ten could be in a mid lane remaining. position or core position. Uh, I'm not too sure where they're going to decide to Five lane this one out. Team remaining. Empire uh, had picked up the Templar Assassin before that. So strong, dominating snowball hero time. in that mid lane for CS and... And uh, well, we'll have to see. Uh, uh, there is a Viper still out there, which is always that kind of go-to counterback for someone like a TA, but uh, I don't know if it kind of works in Vega's lineup or not. It, it just kind of depends, like I said, on where they want to put their roles. Yeah, I think they do need another core hero here. They could run Skyrath and Lich as the supports, Phoenix as the offlaner, and pick up either Ten a safe lane or remaining. a mid-carry type hero. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like the Troll ban, however, Five on the side of Vegas Squadron. Remaining. Troll is a hard counter to yeah, Phoenix. No. The Supernova, the Phoenix Sun, yeah. gets gunned down Radiant so easily if you've got pick. that bonus attack speed. So, yeah, that is a necessary ban here. You either last pick the Phoenix when you have the last pick, or you just go ahead and back it with a ban of the hero that you're worried about. But Mirana's going to come through here for Team Empire, and that is still a very interesting pickup. The attack speed boost will come through from the Leap. Maybe not that much to like nullify the flow from the Fire Spirits or what have you, but it's still going to be Ten there, seconds. and it's going to be allowing them to get a lot of kills, honestly. like They can chain up so many of their abilities. I could list off half a dozen of them. Not really much point. The bottom line is there is a lot of combos that will work to pick people off, and that's yeah. where the Slayer comes into play, kind of breaking down that chain of initiation. If he gets their pack in between any of those abilities, he should be able to slip out if he has all his cooldowns available. So Undershock is uh, immediately grab up the Slark roll, looking to build up that snowball factor and really be the core for the late game. Uh, I do like the Marana grab. I mean, you're going against a Legion commander, so she could put herself into a bit of a bind going committed for a duel. It's going to be an easy arrow grab right there, so Legion commander might need to consider at least a relative BKB at some point, but I say that, but it won't even matter with a Vengeful Spirit swap. And... You know, I'm curious to see. Based on draft alone, I really like the roundness that uh, Team Empire have. Vega uh, squadron, they they got a unique lineup here. It's very rambunctious, Five spicy. Uh, they're looking for a lot of mid-game potential and being able to get those pickoffs, get the early bonus damage needed, and 
We'll have to see how it works out for it. For a team that I haven't seen a whole lot from, uh, I'm really anxious about this one to see how they compare. They're going against Empire, a formidable Prepare team that has been working battle. together for quite some time and has taken down even some of the Giants and have fought their way into lands. And, you know, we'll see here as they go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'll lead off your introductions here, starting with your Radiant side. Uh, it's going to be up in your off lane. We got, oh boy, here, Blaze. Okay, this is going mm -hmm. to be Nine Pash Ibashu. I, I don't know. I'm trying the here. Hard one, dude. <laughs> He's going to be playing your Phoenix here, what it looks like in your offlane position. Mid lane on your Lich, it's going to be Seema the Slayer, it looks like. Just behind in that mid lane is going to be the Legion Commander, played by uh, Nun or Noon. No one, I believe. No, Norn? Norn? No one. No one. Okay, it was hard to see the purple over the green there. No one is going to be playing Legion Commander, except purple. Bottom lane, it's going to be Undershock playing that Slark, and he's going to be accompanied with the Skywrath Mage played by an Art ZQ. Man, I can get distracted with these names. There's an early movement happening, though, from Empire. They smoke, and they're coming in from behind. They are going to see Lich from the low ground here, but is he going to stay still for any sort of potential arrow? If he does level it up, it doesn't look like it. Lich just kind of squirms himself away, and that early movement is not going to come out to any sort of early first blood. It was an odd spread. movement pattern. The Vengeful Spirit was the one, the caboose of the the tra gank train there. He was not really in a position to actually the initiate with the stun, begins. and he's the only one that can do that, unless you're like stacking up a lot of napalm into an arrow. But yeah, at the end of the day, they just uh, scout things out, and uh, they get a haste room for the their troubles. Let's look over the lineup of Empire. We're going to be seeing going down to the bottom lane here, Solo on the Vengeful Spirit, as well as Silent on your core, Marana. Looks like it's a duo off lane where Silent kind of wants to go for... Uh, semi-carry roll set. Obviously, Silent is the carry player of the team, but in this mm. case, is a, a hero that doesn't scale as hard. So maybe gets an early hand of Midas to infuse his momentum. In either case, uh, he's going to have an okay time down here, and they can do this uh, dual lane down bottom because they know it's not going to be a tri lane there. The mid lane is going to be the Lich and the Lich Commander, and that's what Aloha Dance on the Temple Assassin is going to be going up against here. Beyond that, up on the top lane, we do have Always Wanna Fly zoning out the phoenix he is on your elder titan and that means the farming hero on the safe lane is going to be yoki on that bat rider yeah very intriguing lane setup from from uh the empire side knowing that this lich is going to be aiding about the legion commander in the mid lane they're trying to adjust around it quite a bit and they could put together some pretty dominating lanes here top lane easy bowling happening right now on that phoenix to keep him on back and bottom it's a little bit of the same they're harassing the pull camp for now and really making things tricky here for the vega squad and well, as they wait now behind the tower, it is going to be Slark bringing in that extra bit of CS from under below. Mid lane, though, it's still Legion Commander having the early CS start with the first wave or so, having about 6 and 2. Lich is constantly harassing back and keeping Aloha Dance from being able to commit to this wave. So now, using up that bottle, down to just one more shared tango left, and now he's going to have to send the courier back on his way. But it looks like we are going to need a pause here from the Vega squad. Just a, a second, apparently, according to Skywrath Mage. But I have to say, Blaze, I really like the way that Empire have set up their laning. Uh, and uh, we'll see how much they can really capitalize with it. Yeah, I think the strength of the lane down bottom is the real big aspect of the, how the lane evades is going to pan out. Like the mid lane, obviously, that's a 1v2. T is just going to get what she can. The Phoenix has a lot of escape, so she shouldn't die, theoretically, until the lasso perhaps comes out. Always want to fly, though, putting a lot of hurt under the phoenix and at least forcing him back or forcing him to expend some regen but that bottom lane is currently for empire's favor it's going to be actually a pounce onto the marana they will not have the silence though so silent will be able to leap away very slowly oh, though and they will get the first blood wow. no problem right there they get a nice jump right there on the silent and it's going to be the vega squad who strike first look at that bottom lane I was expecting their uh, lane dominance to be pretty significant down there but they turn everyone over and they get their kill Marana so. goes down. What a what a great grab for there if you're Vega squad. And now they quickly step back. Souls and grab that rune there on the bottom. And Loa dance back in this mid lane. Now still trying to struggle a bit. Ooh, Courier's very close, but Lich can't quite move far enough. And when he does move close, he will eat some right clicks. But then Legion's going to be right there. So TA's got her hands full right now. Only three in OCS. Loa dance is uh -huh. not having the best time, but they should have expected it. They did pick up the TA top lane, though. Now it's Batrider putting on the chase, flying over his feathered friend the phoenix here and phoenix constantly gets bullied back but i have to say vega squadron now getting that kill in the bottom lane and getting a lot out of the mid lane that's two out of the three lanes where vega's doing pretty good yeah solo was not acting as a good babysitter there he leaves to go get the rune and that's a perfect opportunity for vega to pounce i would never leave my kid alone with solo there just 
He's he's got too much on his plate. He's like trying to be he's so two far lanes forward front. right now. What is he doing? Silent oh, is gonna get pounced wow. immediately, and he goes down. I don't know what the game plan was right there. He I guess he thought that maybe Skyrath wasn't around, but he like went way deep in there behind the tower and just gets quickly shackled down and taken care of. And Silent goes down again on the Marana. When he's just start pinging the bench. You say, team, where, where, why are you not helping me dive this tier one at three minutes in the game as a level three Marana? So. Yeah. <laughs> If you're going to commit like that, you better have backup nearby. Now they're thinking about making some harassment here on Slark. They get the missile off, but now looking on the go back solo. Going to be slowed down. Pass forward is going to connect. Though the arrow's also there. It's going to be enough for Slark to, to scurry away. Solo will live, but the harassment keeps coming out here from Vega Squad, forcing Empire to pull out something defensively. And as Aloha Dance will rush right for the top four-minute rune, it is going to be a DD. Ooh, that's a big grab for her. And bottom going to be snagged from your Skywrath Mage, the bounty rune. <laughs> Now off top, this uh, Phoenix is going to be doing okay here. He's expended his first 10 stick, magic stick, but he is going to be going for three stacks on top of that. And up against the Batrider, against Elder Titan, you're going to be seeing a lot of spells going your way. So he should be able to sustain mostly just based on the magic stick that he picked up early on. And he does pick up the Tranquils now. So unlimited health, uh, pretty much unlimited mana when you consider how cheap his spells are. Yeah, he is going to be able to just stay and do whatever he wants this lane. Actually, ET is going to take some major Dyer's harassment. No tangos or anything up on all he's going to fly, so he is really hurting here. And oh. it's actually going to be an attempt to kill him. He's going to go for the stop. It will come out in time. Oh, oh but he's still eating a lot of damage. For life, he does go down. Nice work from your Phoenix, but will he pay the price for it? Yoki flying forward on the hunt. The courier comes on through. He's going to bottle on up now and try to really hunt them down. Should be able to get it and will. So it's going to be one for one here in the top lane. Phoenix just happy to get something mid lane now. They're dashing on forward. TA has this DD popped and is still flirting with the idea of staying near this mid lane. But there we go. Vega go down and Empire do get themselves on the board with that kill from the Batrider. Yeah, they're going to observe one in mid, so Solo's rotation won't set them up for like a Magic Missile Meld Strike. And uh, Legion actually just heals herself up to full here. Has gotten a lot of runes, uh, gets to bottle up, and of course the press the attack gives her some HP sustain. So she's looking pretty good to pull forward as the number one CSer here. But Silent's going to try to get dust. Actually, Batrider! Ooh. My goodness! This Man, I got the back end of that one. I just saw his icon keep going up to the north, and eventually he just ran down the Batrider and... Got a bit of revenge from the previous engagement, and now Phoenix picks up a nice big kill here. Top lane, and will continue to farm it on up, and he has enough to finish out that magic wand. I'm anticipating he'll be able to start throwing together a mechanism for his team. And, uh, you know, with that said, Batrider gets put back a little bit even after that kill. And we'll see if Batrider goes right back towards the top or maybe considers shifting to the jungle. But speaking of shifts here, looks like Vega and company... They were considering maybe moving as a unit towards this bottom lane because Dyer's Empire are all down here now. Attack. They have three committed with the Always Want to Fly showing up. And uh oh, they cross paths. Concussion shot. Stun's going to be there. Other Titan throws out his Astral, but can't quite get a good shot here potentially on Skywrath Mage. Now they make a go on Solo, and Slark gets a great pick off there. Now pounces on the Silent. He's going to get a twofer. And now with Phoenix coming on in, eggs on forward. Can't quite get a hold of Always Want to Fly, but it's still a two man takedown bottom lane. The Vega Squadron, let me tell you what, they're off to a 6 and 1 start against Empire. Yeah, it's just Empire, like, getting soloed out, though, right? Like, every single engagement starts with a good several seconds of somebody being completely by themselves. Sometimes it's 2v1, sometimes it's Dyer's 1v1 with a is hero that is better at it. But no matter the case, every single one of these deaths is them uh, stepping out of boundaries and away from allies. They're not playing as a team. They're just playing as individual heroes who think they can pretty much do anything. And obviously, Vega is putting them in their place. They're picking people off with Phoenix, using the, the attack speed slow and the movement speed slow from the Spirits and the Icarus dive to get a couple of kills, both on the ET and on the Batrider. And yeah, it's just slow going for them as they keep on stepping in, in places they don't belong. You know, coming into this one, according to Dota 2 Lounge, Empire are the 70% favorites, but here we go, going mid lane, trying to use what looks like potentially the first duel of the game, but TA is being very oh. sticky, but now they get the duel off right there, and they will burst her down, securing the first set of bonus damage now. Your Legion Commander, played by no one, gets it done. They make a full rotation, and, well, I was going to say, Empire the favorites, 70% to the 30%.
of Euro PP or Euro PB, aka Vega Squadron, but maybe they even underestimated them because hey, they're coming up with a lot of big kills here on a lot of big targets. You're talking taking down the Marana now three times in the bottom lane, and they get this TA in the mid lane, which they had already been shutting down. TA 19 and 7 to Legion Commanders 42 and 18. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, and even on top lane here, Phoenix is doing some work here. Going to dive onto Silent, gets the slow from Icarus, gets the Four Earth seconds start. for ult. Gets it anyways. Oh, running away, has it, and uses it. And Elder Titan is going to have to watch the A come up, and Phoenix will be rebirthed anew. Another great grab right there, top lane by Phoenix alone. And now mid lane, another duel here. They throw out the nuke. Do they have enough? They don't this time. Maybe this time Vega getting a little overzealous with their duel there, but not going to be enough. Yeah, this has actually been a very nice game from them as a whole, though. Solo going to take a lot of damage. He's already dead, and M Silent needs to just get a return kill here. Arrow will come out, but he doesn't have damage beyond that. His right click is still only at 87. He only has Phase Boots and Basti, and uh, the spells aren't coming through when you're silenced up. So down bottom lane, we're actually going to see Slark dive pretty deep here and will be caught in by the lasso without the Dark Pack. We'll use the Shadow Dance, healing back up, and it looks like he will be able to make his way away, but... I guess that's just one real aspect of the lineup is Vegas heroes are quite slippery. The Phoenix, the Slark, the Legion Commander have a lot of different ways to get out of tough situations, and it means they can play aggressively. Empire, they can't afford these mistakes. It's they're, Both sides are making errors, but Empires are the ones that cost them. I mean, based on the draft, I was anticipating Empire were going to have the more formidable lineup, but just based on execution so far, it seems a bit sloppy. You have people getting a bit too excited. They're getting under the tower. They're handing over unnecessary kills, and they can't analyze when they're at the back end here, like top lane. Phoenix controls this lane now. Silent, you're not safe. You can't do plays like this, and he could pay, and he will. Maybe just not used to going against Phoenix and what Phoenix can bring to the table, but they might be able to get some redemption here. Elder Titan hustling down. Let me get you with my frickin' stapler here. I will hit you on the back end if I can. One hit. Oh, really low, earning up. Astral out. Can we get it? Come on, fly. <laughs> Yeah, gets it done, gets that redemption, and takes him down. It's greater though. I mean, you get the kill, Dyer's and you get them to chase him that long. Heck, he would have lived extremely long if the Wave of Terror wasn't able to cancel an Earn Charge, but changing from HP removal to pure damage, it does take it off, and he loses Dyer's that 400 HP that he would have gotten attack. from that uh, activation. Either way, he's pretty happy right now. 5-2-2. Two, and two. Phoenix is going to pick up this mechanism at a pretty insane timing. He's only 700 gold off of it right attack. now. Yeah, this is ridiculous. It looked like a struggling start for Phoenix as he kept getting bullied back, but he wasn't getting caught out. We saw in the first game, X game, the Phoenix was getting bullied and was being taken down and really just couldn't bounce back with any sort of relative farm. But in this game, Phoenix now is the dominator. In this lane, just doing what he wanted, it's very apparent that uh, Mr. Ninepash has been playing a fair amount of Phoenix attack. on his side time because oh, he really knows how to utilize the hero and when that this hero has the upper hand in the lane. And he's taking full advantage of that. Maybe Empire, they're just not used to Phoenix and they don't know when they're at a disadvantage. And they just think they can kind of go one on one in the lane and continue to farm up as easy as possible. But that's not the case. Dyer's but now they're going to make a goal on this pesky bird. They jump on in, get the lasso, get the Dyer's arrow. Stop there. Can they stop it? Yes. They get Phoenix. They take Dyer's her down lasso. before the ultimate's going to be used and that's back-to-back -back takedowns on Phoenix. That should put him down a peg. Sure enough. I don't actually think he would use the ultimate there. It's kind of like the Wraith King reincarnate. If you're not going to be able to use it to turn anything, then it, it kind of lackluster. We're going to see a duel on mid here, but the refraction is up for Aloha. Did take him quite a few hits, but he will survive. And now it's going to be the Earth Splitter coming around the other side here, trying to pin in no one. Aloha Dance will just walk away. I'll always want to fly. Maybe not so fortunate here. A lot of hits coming in wow. from that Mystic Flare, but the Moonlight Shadow will speed him away. Oh, he came in on the wrong angle right there. Oh, they have a sentry. They see him. They get the kill. And nice quick grab right there. And under the tower and getting the pounds onto the Temple Assassin. Did not see that one coming. Oh, wow. Kills back and forth here. Taking down the TA and the Elder Titan. Top lane. Phoenix. Look who he's got again. It's Silent. Oh, man. He is putting a clinic on Silent's Marana. Silent. 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 One and six. Very uncharacteristic, like, oh my god, and it doesn't stop there. Vega are on a snowball streak, and they are not going to be stopped. 15 and 3 as they get another sweet kill here on the bottom lane. Undershock just easily soloing down the Ventful Spirit.
Pasha Bashi is just like, Priest of the Moon, meet the sun. Dyer's and has just been absolutely running her attack. over. This, I mean, this has been devastating to Silent. Yeah, I would have to say it comes down to experience of the Phoenix player and inexperience of the players playing against them. This is essentially what Phoenix has come down to. I think he's actually a fairly well-balanced hero when people know how to play against him. But if you aren't all that familiar, Dyer's if you've been playing too much Captain's Mode, attack. not enough AP, you're gonna be caught off guard by a lot of what he's capable of. And with this kind of unorthodox build here of going for 4-4-0, four, four, it's all about the solo kill. It's all about the solo potential of this Phoenix, and he's been shining in that regard. Jump forward, Lasso, they get a hold, but he quickly purges off anything and is trying to walk on out from this one. The chain does come through, they finish off Legion Commander, only a couple of bounces right there, but they do take down the, the LC. And now, Lich on the outside, Phoenix right in the middle, gonna pull out the ultimate, which they can't stop, but it's going to be a one-man takedown right there from Empire, defending out this mid-tier one, which is very, very low. Still Glyph available, but they pretty much committed their lasso already. I think Vega are going to just persist in this mid lane on finishing off what they started, but there's going to be the deny. Empire not going to allow, and they take that bit of gold away. And now our 322 dream is over, but the 420 dream blaze still very much alive. Yeah, we're going to have to see some more smoke in his seat to get to that 420. But oh, yeah, baby. And your name's Blaze. It works beautifully. It, it really does. <laughs> because it was a dream. <laughs> it, indeed. Still dreaming. We'll see if we get there. But uh, for now, I mean, they're really on a hot streak. They do <laughs> pick up the smoke and a seed. They're on their way there. And obviously, they have the kill advantage right now. They are looking to just snowball this game. And well, with a hero like Slark having the blink dagger at this timing and also 1500 gold banked up, it's very possible for them to follow that up immediately with like something like an Eye of Scotty. They've got the blink duel, so they can choose their fights very carefully. And Empire, their only option is to try to play and respond. Like, Yuki would love to just jump in and lasso somebody and try to get a kill. But so far, they haven't really found any engagements that work under that frame. They essentially have to play reactively. They have to just look to get a stomp and a earth splitter when uh, Vega take up the offensive. Slark might be pressured here, hiding behind the tower as three do approach from the side of Empire. Oh, Batrider scouting out Invis just walks past him and now can cross Ooh, past him. Bad. He goes into Firefly. Can he get a hold of him? The Shadow Walk is going to be there. They're going to try to slow him down and Moonlight Shadow even going to come out here from Empire. As look from behind. You can see them couch out the bin. They're going to get a hold of VS here. The support duo burst him down. Mystic Flare. They need another Arcane Bolt. It should catch up and take him down. Meanwhile, on the back bottom lines, they get a hold of LC and do finish him off. It's a one for one trade in favor of Empire. But here comes Slark getting a hold have always want to fly, able to get the kill, but it's a double for Skywrath Mage. Skywrath Mage does get bursted down very nicely from Aloha Dance, and now Desperate TP gets out. TA escapes, last second right there, a regular Houdini on that one as he gets out of the cuffs in the bag, and it's going to be a two for two at the end of it. Slight nod, I'd have to say. Well, actually pretty down the middle as they do take Silent in exchange for LC, and that is supposed to be a core farming Marana, so... I guess you could say, oh, it's a three for two, actually, at the end of it. So, big advantage for Vega still. You know, they took a lot out of that. I mean, the Slark gets to build up further. He's going to have a his next item, whatever it may be, Charlie Ultimate Orb will come out for him as he sells off an item. And, yeah, that is going to be straight up a Scotty at, like, the 20, 22 minute mark, somewhere in there. I mean, just absolutely insane farm on him. The Legion Commander only has one duel under her belt, so with the Blade Mail, maybe she can make more things happen. But I think she should prioritize Radiant's roaming with the Skywrath and just going for the attack. dual Mystic Flare. And here we go here after pulling back. They still really need to farm. I mean, Silent has just phase boots still and 340 gold. Did he actually purchase something recently? Or is, no, he's just that broke. We only yeah. have smoke right here. Is, that's rough. Now heading back towards that top lane where Legion Commander already is. Your LC still only has 10 Dyer's bonus damage after that first attack. duel hasn't really found any more damage to follow it up. Locked him down, but the timing was just off before he had those reinforcements to help get that burst. But now they got Skywrath nearby with that Mystic Flare and even Phoenix. They want to go for this top lane and We'll see if Empire can pull out a, a formidable defense. Radiant's There's your blink forward, however, and uh, they're actually not going to catch anyone with it. They'll see was yeah. trying to get a hold of someone, but can't quite catch the mark. Seeing the jump forward right there forces Empire to pull back from this top lane, and I think they're just going to have to sacrifice this tier one if they keep yep. pushing. Dyer's but it's going to be an exchange here. They can attack. take the tier one all they want, but we're going to see a nice little uh, rebound here with Empire taking this Roche down. Just mm -hmm. the Venture Spirit plus the Templar Assassin. This is a duo of heroes that can take this Roche anytime after level 7. And Your here they are claiming it for the themselves. Dark. The Aegis up on Aloha Dance. Much Dyer's needed golden experience going their way. And uh, it's going to be at the cost of the Dyer's tier one most likely. That ain't too bad if you're Empire. They're happy to get that extra life and feel a little more confident because if the next team fight they really utilize that 
contagious and come out on top, that is just the starting point for them to slowly rubber band in themselves into the mid game. Because it had been a struggling start here from Empire, something we don't see a whole lot from, especially a team. But mid lane, they're making the jump on forward here. TA now going to be the one making it go on back. And here we go. Lasso catches LC, brings her right in. Chain Frost is going to be there, but the damage has already been done. LC falls. A lot of dancing, a lot of damage, however, from this bounce and hits it again. And now has to pull on back. Meanwhile, Slark is going to go on a cleanup here. Does manage to take down Silent once more, and they get the Lich over here. Yoki TP's out and away before Slark can show up and get a hold of him, and ends up being a two for one, though Silent goes down again. Top lane, Skywrath Mage is going to support on support battle. Yeah. Oh, Mystic Flare, not going to quite get enough damage. Always Want to Fly will just easily step out and away from that one, but Lord Murdy, we got 19 and 8, still in favor of the Vega Squadron. Yeah, still, I mean, it's not as advantageous as it used to be, but it's it's not too shabby. They're still taking a lot of good fights here. They're going to get the Blade Mill up on Legion soon, and of course that Slark, as I mentioned, is well on his way to the Scotty. But the fast, past couple fights from Empire have been solid, deterring the push on the top lane, getting a couple kills in mid, and uh, still Radiant's having that Aegis to work with if Aloha attack. Dance gets aggressive down bottom. So... I still think that they're in this game for sure, and they have some real potential if they can collaborate with their team fight a little bit. ET needs to land some Earth Splitters. They need to get a really good lasso pick off on the offensive, Radiant and I guess uh, Yoki's fortified. just waiting for his four staff on that one. Here we go, bottom lane. We're going to see some rotations. Ooh. Jumping forward is going to miss the pounce, though, as they try to get a hold of TA, and mind you, she still does have that Aegis, so here we go. Phoenix, Icarus dive all the way on forward to try to get a hold of that Vengeful Spirit and continues his chase. And then we'll pull back, but ultimately, Vega Squadron will come up short. Empire just swiftly step away from what looked like their attempt on making a go on this Tier 1. It's not low enough for the deny, uh, fortunately for them, but just continue to add pressure everywhere else. They feel pretty confident with their late game, which I don't know, Blaze. Do you think Empire can pull together a late game, which has to at this point be on the back more of the TA now, and then even silence Marana? Yeah, Silent's so going to go for a Midas here, so it's going to se secure his late game a little bit. I mean, he could go for Maelstrom, but I think that would give him too little. Yeah, I mean, it would give him more now, but it would Dyer's give him too little at the 40-minute mark. Uh, I'm skeptical about their late game potential. I think they need probably a Midas on the Marana and the Elder Titan to actually be able to bring themselves into it, and they have to turtle really hard until those come online. If they don't Radiant's go for at least one Midas, then there is fallen. very little chance for them to out-carry what Vega are bringing right now, but obviously they're they're currently just worried about staying alive under their towers. Moonlight Shadow, but the sentries are already out, two of them, because one was a little too close to the tower, but Vega will know if they're trying to come on in, and now they blink forward, trying to go for a grab themselves as Slark, trying to go on solo, but he's working a little too hard to try to take down that little support, might overdive here, but here comes the oh. help, the lasso's gonna be there, but nope, it's gonna be quickly taken off from LC, now LC gets her own duel, and now it's gonna be a Mystic Flare on the backhand side, already two have hit in the deck though from Empire, Vega lose no one, they step back and they're ready for the engagement from Empire with those sentry wards, great positioning from them. Yeah, they are just running them over right now. It's it's making it so they can just continue to press their advantage. Uh, Roche or no Roche, the Tiempo Assassin just doesn't want to get involved enough to hop her first life. So they're going to take the tier two. They take a number of kills. Dyer's Finally, Empire are fi scrambling for the items that they need to try to make a fight happen. The four staff up with the Bat Rider Dyer's is huge for them actually pulling fallen. somebody out of position. But end of the day, you're still up against some really good spells that are going to pick you off whenever you try to initiate if they're quick on the draw. And as we saw that last time, the Slark just got his Dark Pact up in time when the Lasso went in, and it's a very small timing interval between the expiration of the one Dark Pact and the beginning of the next with its cooldown coming off. So we're, we're waiting to see here what the game plan is going to be for Empire to try this take take this one late because it's not going so good early. You see Legion Commander gets a, a nice takedown of the Elder Titan in the bottom lane. They could really stay around a long time for that one, but here we go. Top, they're making it go on Phoenix. Blinking forward, but it's too late. Icarus Dive does go out, but they slow down this Phoenix from getting away, and no ultimate available. They will be able to take down the bird, and it's going to be picked up right there from Yoki, but can they get silent on the way back? They've been doing it. And, uh, well, it's going to be another kill right there as they do get the follow-through on the Batrider going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, however. 
It is going to be the Slark and TA. Now it TA is going to be forced to use out the Aegis as she comes back for a second life, however. Does burst on the Slark, and now she's eating way too much. Solo, though, nice swap. Takes her to the low ground, but Slark's not done yet. Blinks on four, gets the pounce, and they take down the Aloha Dance. Now making it a three for one. Solo, though, not going to be so lucky trying to get away. The sleep is going to be there. It does stop Skyrath. Mage gets the right click. Vengeful gets the return kill, but still goes down to Undershock, who profits so much more from it. Grabbing another sweet one. He's going right for a Scotty. He has two orbs, and he might have a kill here on Elder Titan, making it a five-man takedown. Death Pack Pulse, and there it is. Vega Squadron, also known as Euro PB Man. They are taking it to the favorites empire in this game. 27 to 10, with a net worth advantage of about 5K. This is looking like a pretty good upset in the works, Blaze. Slurk. At 22 minutes, comes out of a fight with 63 stolen agility. I've nothing shift. Just gets to right click 21 times throughout a fight. So much survivability. The team fight really wasn't there for Empire. Yoki expends his lasso on the last 100 HP of the Phoenix. The Earth Splitter hits Dyer's absolutely nothing. If they can't land their attack. spells, they won't last five more Dyer's minutes. I mean, the Slurk is about to have a Scotty. This Legion is building up for dual stacks now, and it's going to have a blade Dyer's mail and a BKB shortly. And then it's the the Roche and the Death Push. Like that's not going to be long before Roche respawns two to five minutes, and that's going to be the cycle with which Vega need to end this game out, or not need to, but are completely capable of. Silent will pick up the Maelstrom, but uh, like I said, I don't know if that's going to give them enough now to make up for the fact that they don't have a Midas for later. They're just going to get outscaled, out tempoed. Everything is going is up Vega. Attack. Yeah, and she's still so weak, not even a thousand life. They jump forward, they bait in the TA who's trying to finish off the tower, and they get that TA. More damage awarded now to your LC, and they're not done yet. Nice catch right there from your Slark, and they take down Silent. That is both cores from Empire taken out at the drop of a hat. If that doesn't show how this game has been going, I don't know what else will. Man, Vega Squadron, hopefully we're not underestimated in this one. They are showing a serious clinic in the early game. Now in the mid game, look just as dominant. Yeah, uh -oh, solo, Woo, nice sidestep avoids the pounce, but can you really avoid the Slark? Oh, swap with the bat to get out from this one, but yeah, it's not gonna matter. Slow. Solo is gonna get tracked down. Slark continues to go on a hunt, even leaps to the low ground for this one, and Batrider is just on all full flight mode to try to get away and this is a bat rider who's trying to get caught. he still gets caught out oh undershock man what a player they find it again and there's going to be a pause coming out it's not a dc pause but it is a pause none oh there it is the dc okay so phoenix does dc right after the kill you can still see the winner mark right there this is now 66 bonus damage on your legion commander bkb near complete what can empire do I could <laughs> curl up in a ball and cry. Like, I don't have a good answer for you, man. I would love to see, like, the high ground defense from the Elder Titan, something immense coming out where Empire can really make this a competitive match. But so far, they've just been run over. This lineup that shouldn't be really that active until about this time, the 24-minute mark, has been dominating for the past 24 minutes from, from the gates. And I would have to say it's on mostly on the misplays of Empire. Like, they have been continuously going out by themselves trying to do things without the support of their teammates. They make this a one-man show or times five, and they do. meanwhile, Vega are playing as a team. They're finding the takeoffs. They're finding the opportunities to, I mean, like, for example, that that action down bottom. There was a Templar Assassin slowly pushing down a tier one tower all by herself with only yeah. the other four and Marana by herself. But what were Vega doing? They were planning and timing it so they yeah. could blink duel, chain a TP into a Mystic Flare, and get a kill that way. Like, that's coordination. Yep. And that's what Vega have that Empire currently do not. I mean, Vega know a team that's very much the underdog, that it's it's a win-win for them. You know, if they don't get the victory over Empire, well, it's Empire. And if they get the victory, well, then they look damn good. So they feel confident coming in. And after those first early kills, Silent gets caught out bottom lane. Another catch out of Silent, speak of the devil. He does get the tower, but really, he goes down. It's another sweet kill for Undershock. The Slark has a Scotty and already 2,200 gold. Just grossly farmed out of his mind. And, uh... I don't know, man. It's just, it might be just too much at this point. It would take a serious overthrow from the Vega squadron to really hand this one back over to Empire. Overthrow. I don't think I've heard that one before, but it seems pretty appropriate. They, yeah. they have to throw this game more than once. They have to throw it like two times over. 
more than any other throw we've seen before because they are just in such a damn good spot. I mean, the Phoenix has his Atos. He can pick people off without even using Supernova. Like, Atos plus Fire Spirits plus Icarus Dive. That's a kill on just about anyone here, and he's going to go on Aloha oh, Dance. Dive forward it. with that Atos, putting it to work, slows down TA, but she just promptly goes in Viz, and they don't have the detection on hand for that one, but... They add a little bit of pressure because mid lane is where it's at. Biggest Squadron now looking for that tier two. It's great to get a lot of these kills, but you got to make sure you get the objectives as well so you can break it into the base and hit Empire while they are at their weakest. And with that, they feel comfortable. They're going for this tier two. There's really no contention. Empire feel like they need to keep farming up so they have some sort of huge damage to contest with all this. You see bottom lane TA, one of the few who can do it, only sporting a Yasha. You've got a Yasha drums phase going against the Slark, who Blink Dagger, Scotty, now has Hyperstone, probably building up, I'd imagine, into an AC. It's it's gonna get ridiculous. And now with their advantage, they move in and they're gonna go for Roche. And let's see, Empire, they do have a Batrider. I don't know, maybe plays could be had, Blaze. Could, uh, could hope, one would, would certainly would, but even scouting out with the Spirit here, they're gonna go for a Stomp, delaying it, and uh, they're just shrugging off. They're very, very confident right now. But the thing is, this is the, the game hinging Roshan. Empire have to contest you, because if the A just goes to Slurk, they built up an AC, he is unstoppable. So they go in with the Mirana, try for a cool flank, in the end, she just gets picked off, and now even if they get the best initiation you can imagine, they still don't have the damage to follow it up. Let's see here, Bat's nearby, he's smoked up. In case they have that ward up there, which they do. But they're gonna see him if he tries match. to come too close. Oh, he's got the inventory sleep. slot ready. Forces him back, he is ready. He's like, this is my chance. They gotta go now though, it's real low. Flame break, can he grab it? No, he gets snagged up from Slark. The kill is also gonna be taken and, well, now at the high ground, Slark leaps up and above. Solo, who's right in it, will go down. They go up and behind. They do get a hold of that Bat Rider. It's a godlike streak for your Slark. They take down two. There's going to be no Aegis stole from Empire. And, well, now they just go right into the base. No holds barred. They don't care. Jump forward, pounce. They get Fly. Fly gets off his sleep, but doesn't matter. Pack was already on and available there from Undershock. And they get their kill. They take down three. They get their Aegis. And they're about to take the Empire base. This is just ridiculous. Now, it is worth noting that the Vengeful Spirit was killed off by the Phoenix. So anytime Phoenix is around the push, uh, they are going to be taking that negative aura, which is at three points out of four. So eh, I think he should probably stay back and just use his long range Sunray to help the push. But in either case, they're in such dominant force. They're going to be taking this mid lane. And even with Daya's all the ultimates up, I don't even know if they can take it. But with all of them down, there is no hope. Here we go. Silent dances forward, gets the arrow, and immediately leaps back because Slark is already on a tear. They just don't care about the structures at this point, Blaze. They are going behind. They know that they are that much more stronger, that they can just sweep through and get whatever the hell they want. That was the uh, TA, mind you, that just got instantly manhandled like it was nothing. And on the way out, Vega put themselves out. They'll resituate. They'll pop their heels. They'll do what they need to do, and they'll go back in for round two because now with TA down for 40 seconds, no buyback. Mind you, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot to stop them from taking what they want. And I would not call this a draft loss. Like, obviously, we saw the game already in favor of Vega very early on. So a lot of people would say attribute that to, OK, the pieces that were put in play were insufficient. But I think their draft was strong. Their execution just not nearly at the level of Vega's. They'll pop the BKB blade mail, lose the Legion Commander out. Away. And he will be swapped in. They can kill him, but he plays and dodges all the wow. projectiles. Well, Undershock just makes this a one-man show. Yeah, they invested a lot just to even try to get that LC. Yes, the LC gets me. away, and Slark's like, nice try, kids. But now I'm going to go ahead and start taking what I want, and he just gets a couple of kills right there. His Aegis will be popped, but they have seen enough. Empire, they go down 39-10 to 10 when they call the GG. Absolutely Radiant dominating victory. performance from start to finish from Vega Squadron, also known as Euro PP, or Euro PB rather, and uh, quite the upset. Mind you again, Empire coming in the 70% favorites. A lot of people just won a lot of hats. Most definitely, and quite a, just the equal amount losing them, unfortunately. Sorry mm -hmm. for the, the fans of Empire here, but the Empire does not strike back this time around. They go down, and they will not be coming back. 2 of 13 in Marana. Silent just not having a good game here overall, and you see those fantasy points, like something amazing for the Slark, for the Phoenix, but uh, Empire just down in the dumps. They had a really rough one this time.
Very rough indeed, but we are not done yet. We have lots more Dota action to come. Maybe not lots more, but we definitely have at least two more games to finish out our European division today. Coming up next, it is going to be the Goomba squad taking on Team Secret. And then after that, Secret's going to be back again, and they will take on MYI. So if you want to see your good old favorites, the Puppy Big Daddy squad, they are back uh, from their, I guess, Dream League temporary. There's lots of match happening right now, but they are going to make their debut here for Star Ladder Season 11. Looking forward to it here. And for Goomba, who did win earlier, maybe they can kind of keep that momentum and go for a big upset themselves. But thanks for sitting tight, folks. That will be coming up momentarily. If you like what you heard, catch us on our Twitter, myself, a Kyle guy. Blaze joining me remotely. Catch him on his Twitter at BlazeCasting. We'll go to a small break, and we'll be back with Goomba taking on Team Secret.